3. I don't feel he's very strong anymore. I think Riot over nerfed him actually. I might actually move him down to tier 4 in competitive play. I really don't feel that he's that great anymore. Uh, Jungle Jarvan's alright, um, but Lane Jarvan just sucks now. And I just feel like they're kind of ruined that champion, which kind of sucks. Um, Mordekaiser, I have moved up to tier two. I'm not. I'm really skeptical about moving him up to tier one because in tournament play, no one's really playing him, but everyone knows, or at least uh, North American side, that he's so strong. Right? He's like everyone. Everyone knows uh, he's like godlike tier one and in solo queue. But like in competitive play, no one's picking him. And I'm kind of curious to why that is. I think it might just because he lacks utility and CC kind of deal. But I mean, you could build a team technically around Mordekaiser if you got him. And just uh, you know, amplify his uh, ultimate, like get that ultimate off really quick. But I'm not quite sure about him. You know, it's just like I can't. I want to move him to tier one, but I don't think it's the right choice. So I did move him up to tier two. Uh, he's high in tier two uh, because of his great laning phase, great dominance, great team fight. Get, where do these fucking bugs come from? Anyways, uh, <laughs> there's my uh, ADD, um, and I just feel he's he's just. He's just so strong in lane, and everyone knows that, but no one's picking him in competitive play, so it's like, hmm, I don't know if I want to move him up to Tier 1, so we'll have to see if this next tournament, maybe MLG will be picking a little bit more, and maybe they'll give me the, I guess, the cojones to move him up to Tier 1 finally. Um, but for now, he's going to sit in Tier 2. Uh, Nunu has been moved down to Tier 4. <sighs> Yeti just does shit all now. Uh, he went from godlike tier at uh, DreamHack to just, right, it's like, Whoa, that champion got picked a lot. Time to fucking bend you over. <coughs> you like that, Nunu? You like that, Nunu? And it's like, little kid's like, this is rape. And he's like, I don't care, I'm a pedophile. <laughs> and uh, that was awful. I don't know why I said that. But that's basically what happened to Nunu. That awful thing I just said happened to Nunu, essentially. And he's, he's I just don't, like, no jungler is picking him anymore. He And if they do, they're just putting their team at a disadvantage because he, he, his utility and his, you know, ability to counter jungle and his team fight prowess has just been has just been shattered, essentially. And I just don't feel that he's that great. I might even move him down to, like, hard to place because I really don't see him being picked for any competitive team. Um, unless it was, like, some sort of, like, Sivir comp where, like, they're, like, speed and they got, like, Jarvan. But then that team would kind of suck, probably. Anyways, let's move on. Uh, Togath has moved up to tier one. Obviously, um, not like obviously Hotshot has played. I was always played a great Cho'Gath, but um, it, it, I think he's really sh like he really shined at Gamescom. Like he just really, really, truly shined. Uh, his lane sustain is fantastic. His getting tanky is just amazing, and uh, he's just he's just tier one worthy. He's just got he's got all the CC. He's got all the ability to tank, and he does great damage for a tank. He's he's just the epitome of a uh, tanky DPS right now. I'd say uh, so. I have moved him up to tier one. Um, then I have Lee Sand moved up to tier one as well. His jungling is really great. His team fight is great, and and he can counter jungle quite well too. Um, and, I, and I really feel that he is he's a tier one jungler right now in the game. And that's that's about it. That's all I'm gonna say about him. Uh, Singed has been moved up in tier two. Um, so just had him a little bit low, so I moved him up a bit. That's that's all I'm gonna say about him. Uh, Kogma has been moved up to tier one, obviously, uh, as I talked about with the Vayne effect. Um, Kogma sucks early game pretty good middle game, and then just, like, you get a couple items, and you hit late game, and p your team starts supporting you, and Kog'Maw's just like, fuck bitches, I'm Kog'Maw, like, press W, uh, 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 dead, uh, 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 dead, uh, 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 dead, like, so gross, dead. that damage is just disgusting, and his poke is amazing, too, uh, you guys all seen Kog'Maw, you know how to play him, and, and, and everyone knows that after that tournament, he's, he's moving up, obviously, he's really got a great pick, I actually called this, I believe, I think I did it in my solo queue patch. I was like, Kogma might be like a sleeper tier one, but I'm not sure yet. And I did, I did call that. I'm calling myself, pat myself on the back for that one. That Kogma could be a sleeper tier one, and he he essentially is because uh, I guess the teams learned that, or all teams. I I, I guess yeah, everyone learned that um, if you support that that little fuck, he's gonna do damage and bend over the other team just big time. Uh, or got actually moved to tier one too. Our uh, tier not not tier one. Moved up to tier two, two. Um, he's great at um, what's it called? Focus firing down targets, like just bursting down targets. Uh, he's actually picked by a couple times by European teams, and we actually picked him up for a final game versus TSM as a good counter to the the Urgot, or not the Urgot, the Udir, and um, 
he used to be really great. He's he, he's great at um, surviving. He's great at uh, single target DPS, just blowing up one target really quick and just you know debuffing them. And and, and that's sometimes what you need. Um, I'm not putting him to tier one because I don't feel he's tier one worthy at all. He's just, he's a good he's a good pick for situational team comp. And and I do feel that he's tier two worthy in that sense. That is that he can do a great job as an AD carry in the right situation. Not every situation. But when he, when he is able to be chosen, he's going to do fantastic, and, and and it really showed at um, Gamescom. Uh, Kenny might have moved up to tier two after his little buffs. I really feel like he's a he, he might even. I actually think Kenny might be a tier one champion. We'll have to see. Um, Kenny is great in team fights. Uh, everyone knows how to play Kenan again. It's like it's like I, I don't I want to repeat myself. Oh, this champion's good for this. It's like well, Kenan moves up because um, he got a little bit of buffs and people moved down a little bit. And right now, um, his laning phase has always been incredibly strong, um, but people are actually building him a little bit differently now. Uh, for some reason, no one played, um, what's it called, uh, Hextech Revolver Kennen into like, um, uh, like a fast rush of Rylai's and, uh, what is that one other gun? The, I can't think right now, it's too late. Um, the book, the book that gives 25% spell ban. Like rushing those items and that kind of stuff, and it just works so well on him. Like it just adds so much utility to him, and it just gives him the, the ability to survive the lane and just control everything so much better. And I don't know why it took so long for like the competitive, competitive, mu holy crap, sto 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 to, um, <laughs> Uh, it took so long for the competitive communities to um, realize this because, uh, like, a couple a couple of months back ago, there was a couple of players playing Kenan like this. And they had great success, and then it just didn't catch on for some reason. Um, I guess there was you know too many OP champs at the time. It was like, oh, no one can pick Kenan. Uh, but whatever. I'm moving a Kenan up to tier two because he's a great laning ch phase champion. He's a great team fight champion, and he's overall pretty good. Um, Organa has been moved up to tier two as well. Uh, she just got some recent buffs that really put her up um, there. Um, in the uh, ultimate buff, they just it, it um it basically takes uh, I think it's one point five did they take it one point five seconds off or one second off the channel time to in total. Um and it really works out fantastic for her. Um and and, and it and it went from four seconds down to three yeah, it went from four seconds down to three seconds on the little things, the little stunt coming out. So it's like controlling that and getting into a position and really locking people down for stuns on her ultimate is really great now. And her laning phase is fucking fantastic because uh, if you guys didn't know, uh, Morgana's passive is built in sp uh, spell vamp, and you you literally get puddle, you you spam it all day on lane, you push your lanes like crazy, you never die because you have this built in spell vamp, and you can just rush whatever item you choose and you can just dominate with her. I don't know if you guys watched their games before, but Mor Mor this Morgana has literally like carried her entire team. She is a viable um, AP carry again. I'm really happy to see that because Morgana was like totally out of the loop for like almost a full year. So good, good job, Riot, for this one. And um, yeah, that's it. Uh, Jax has been moved up to tier two. I didn't move him up to tier one despite his uh, um, performance at Gamescom um, because of his recent nerfs he just got. Uh, he did get hit in his laning phase, 15 damage on his early game on each empower and um, jump. I think I think it's called jump strike. Um, so that's that's a that's thirty damage early game. Uh, that's that's gonna hurt his laning phase. He's not gonna be able to control it as well. Uh, he might still be a tier one champion. I'm not sure. I'd have to try still. Um, I'm gonna get these new updates out after MLG anyways. So we'll I'll probably move this shit around again. Um, but yeah, I feel that he would have been tier one if he didn't get nerfed. But now since he did get a little bit nerfed, I'm moving him to tier two just just for like a safekeeping because I don't want to I don't want I don't think he is tier one worthy anymore, and I think he's tier two worthy now. And yeah. That's it. Uh, Garen has been moved up to tier three. Um, Garen's pretty good solo lane top um, because of his passive now. Um, it, it stacks up to twenty five armor resistance and magic resistance quite quickly. So if you get that at like level one or not level one, if you get like level like two or three and you start not actually two, two is pretty hard. If you get like level three, uh, level four most of the time, and you start lasting uh, creeps really early, uh, you can have like. Like eighty magic resistance, or like like seventy and seventy magic resistance, magic resistance and armor, at like level five, which is crazy. That's so strong for lane It's built in passive regeneration. It's just so good, and and he just can he can truly just dominate top lanes versus versus uh, a lot of melee uh, champions. Like uh, I went up against like, like a singe and stuff like that, and I just decimate them. And I had I had this like little Garen spree where I just played Garen like fucking like 
eight games in a row, and I was just like, holy shit, it's broken, like, it's so good, and then I kind of got put my plays by a couple champions, but it's like, Garrett is a viable pick, if, you, if you're counting the right champions with him, and that's it, I mean, and he's, he's, he's pretty good now, I, I enjoy playing him, uh, Trundle's been moved up to, uh, tier two, um, Move turn up to tier two because all these tanky DBS champions in lane have kind of been um, nerfed. Like Udyr just got nerfed. All these like you know good top laners, uh, and Trundle is still tanky DPS that can be played in the lane. I didn't know. I had never seen a Trundle be played. I, I heard Europeans were doing it, and then I finally see the uh, our seed scene. Um, players been doing it like Rain Man and stuff, and they having great success with it. So I am moving him up to tier two because of that. It was his pretty good laning phase. Um, yeah, he he's he's a pretty good. Top lane champion, he can really uh, you know decimate uh, single uh, decimate champions with a single target uh, ultimate nuke and make himself like a super tank. And uh, yeah, I, I feel he's a tier two champion. Um, yeah, Vigar has actually been moved up to tier three. Um, I think Pobelter, is it Pobelter? No, it's, I think it's NY Jackie. NY Jackie for uh, Curse Gaming uh, really showed, I think, the competitive community that that Vagar is really really viable. In, in the right hands. Like, he's a champion that requires so much skill. He's kind of like the Nidalee, like the Nidalee hotshot effect. Hotshot's so good at Nidalee, you never wanted to have him. Uh, NY Jack, he's so good at Vigar, you never wanted to have him. And it's just one of those champions that you pick up and they require a lot of skill, but because they require a lot of skill, you don't see a lot of good ones. But when you see Gomez, it's like, holy fuck, this guy is really good. So, when playing at a great level, I really feel that he, he is uh, a viable caster. He might even be, be like tier two where the. Um, when played at, at, at that, that's such a high level, um, and yeah, that's basically why I'm moving up is because a single player's performance has truly shown that he, he's at at the very top level, like very top. No one has played Vi like Vigar like he has before, a and in competitive play, you're gonna see ch you're gonna see players that that do things that aren't normal with those champions like holy crap how do you so good with that champion so, well they have like a thousand games with them that's why so i mean there are those unique situations like this um where he is being moved up and and that's totally the reason why because that guy is just so amazing and he just decimates people he, he lanes against like he did like vigor versus oriana and somehow like won the lane i was just like what the hell like you're, you're so good at that champion um yeah that's all i'm gonna say about that uh, Galio, or Galio, whatever you want to pronounce it, has been moved up to tier 3. I was actually thinking about doing this before, before he has his little buffs. Um, he, yeah, he's a good solo lane top, only versus some champions. You can't run him versus everybody. He can lose his lane versus a lot of champions, but if you do the right matchup, and you do um, get it like that, Galio is a pretty good champion, as you saw at the Gamescom. Uh, he can be picked. He can be picked for a counter pick, and he can do some great AoE. Um... Yeah, uh, Phil Six has been moved down in Tier 1. Just feel he shouldn't be as high as I had him. That's about it. And then Kale has been moved down in Tier 3. Or down to Tier 3, rather. Um, I had her, uh, like, I think I had her Tier 2. Or Tier 1. I think I had her Tier 2 before. Uh, I don't know if those recent buffs has really helped her as much as everyone would like to think. Uh, I'd have to play her. Um, but for previous Kale, for pre-buff Kale that she's got, she's definitely a tier 3 champion, uh, possibly tier 4, she's really awful. So I'm putting her in tier 3 right now, uh, just, just in case, and uh, I feel that she's gonna be, she could be a little bit more viable, but I'm not sure. Um, yeah. I don't know.